Howdy, and welcome to Painting Our Monsters. Today we're going to be doing a painting in two parts, so this video is going to be the landscape, and then we'll have another one of just the monster. You can see I've already painted the sky in here and the water, and so now we're just putting in the land features. Uh, first, I'm starting with some distant trees. So I'm just using this fan brush and a bit of olive green acrylic paint and just slowly working my way across the horizon. I'm paying a lot more attention to the top of the trees than the bottom because I know I'm going to come in here later and take out the bottom by putting in a shoreline. Also you'll notice as I'm working from left to right the trees are getting bigger. That's because I want to give the illusion that the coastline on that side of the painting is closer so our brain sees okay these are the same kind of trees but these ones are larger which means they're closer so simple little tricks like that are really really fun to work with. Now I just got a little bit of that same olive green mixed with white and I'm just putting that in there for a little bit of highlights um, just to show where this the starlight from this galaxy is reflecting off these trees and just to give it a little bit of texture when you're when you're looking at it. Now like I said underneath these trees we're gonna come in with a shoreline so it's it's nighttime I'm, I'm going for a darker painting so we're just going for darkness so we're just putting in some black here and we'll come in with a water line later but first we're just kinda blocking off these trees so any of them that slip down too low you could use this opportunity to go ahead and get rid of them now pay again pay special attention to how that that shoreline wraps around and if we get it a little bit closer on this side it gives us that illusion of of something fading into the distance now I'm, I'm using just a palette knife here and I've put a little roll of white paint on it and just barely grazing it along the shoreline here. I'm, I'm loving these little breaks, these little bits of white, little drips and drops I get. Those things give us the illusion of water and that's what makes painting like this real fun. Now like I said, you can go and watch the other video, I'm going to have that up, of, of just me painting this monster and I'm painting that in live real time so it's about a 10 minute video of, of just me working on this zebra mussels fella here. But uh, moving past that, now we're doing them same trees but in the foreground. Now I'm using olive green with a little bit of black mixed in because these are going to be going to come in with highlights so we want that background nice and dark. And I'm just trying to frame up this this lake, this body of water. We're trying to push it back and give us a sense of scale and a sense of scale don't work too good if you don't have a foreground. So we're putting in these trees. I'm thinking these are these could be pine, these could be Roosevelt weed. These are something some sort of not too big of a tree just covered up and covered up in needles or tiny leaves and again we're just gonna come in with a little bit of that same color green that olive green mixed with white and you can see my fan brush is all kinda funky it's not all spread out even and I think that's fine because that gives us a lot of different texture and it does a lot of the work for us when we're painting these landscapes it's really fun to just use the different shape brushes to come up with all these different plant shapes plants are wonderful things and they, they always have these repeating patterns where they, they grow the same way over and over every branch every twig kinda is similar so that's that's all we're looking for with the brushes is to repeat that effect now we're pushing those trees into the background by putting in a couple of hills here in the front so we just want to preserve the very bottom of those trees to give us there's a little bit of darkness in there and that darkness is gonna create the depth but then I'm just using a big old brush with a little bit of green and white mixed together to give us a little bit of texture and just coming in. I'm going to put a lot of a lot of different stuff on top of this, so I'm not too worried about getting all the textures right now. We're just kind of blocking it out so we can see what we're going to be looking at. And this is where we're standing. We're standing up on these hills. Maybe we're on a third hill, a higher one up, looking out across this, this landscape. So just using a little bit of white to separate it from those trees back there, okay? Now this is one of my favorite parts. You've got to take your time. Where are our trees going to go? No reason to rush. Think about it. Where are your trees going to go? You need a tree to, to reach out from the foreground to cover the middle ground and into the background because that creates depth. So where is it going to be? There it is. Okay. Now I didn't put it too close on that hill. I put it a little further back, but take your time figuring that out. That's okay. So now that it's there, though, that's where he's got to be. So we got to strengthen him up, give him a little bit more. Maybe he needs a couple branches in here. I'm always tempted to cover up these kaiju, but then it's like you don't want to cover them. So over here we can do a much bigger tree because we don't have to worry about... I'm pretty happy with how he turned out, so we don't have to worry about covering him up at all over here. But we do want to reach up from our foreground all the way into the sky because that's going to tell the eye exactly what's happening. Oh, those things are way back there. That's why this tree's covering them up. So now uh, I got the kind of basic structures of the tree trunk, so now I'm just using some 
brown acrylic paint mixed with water to give it a really nice little flow to it. So all these branches you can see I'm wiggling real good and just moving them branches about. And that works easier if you got a, a, a wetter paint. I use a pretty much pure thick paint for the trunk because I love to get a little bit of a 3D texture effect. But then I, I come in here with a wetter brush. Now this is a lot of fun. Look at here. I flipped that brush upside down and immediately I saw that that's not right. That's not what I wanted. The texture's all wrong there. But that's okay. And, and that's what's fun about painting is that you can make these mistakes and then you can come back and figure out how to fix them. For me, I'm, I'm learning more and more that the angle of the brush is so important. So um, now I'm coming in and, and using the angle of this brush to show some light. And I think that that bottom of that tree works just fine. Now, where is this light coming from, you might ask? Well, it's coming from the stars up above. It's coming from it's coming from this galaxy back there. And we're using the light to, again, separate the foreground from the background. It's a, it's a muted painting, so we need that light to separate the green from the same green. Now, these trees are going to look a little more convincing if we kind of hide where they're fitting into the ground. So we're putting in a couple bushes. I'm using a, just some more paint. The same olive green mixed with black or mixed with white. And then this is a, a real great little palette scraper I stole from a friend. Now, zebra mussels is an invasive creature, so uh, we're putting in a whole bunch of mussels up in here. And I'm using the same technique. Started with purple, then black, then a little bit of silver. And we're just trusting the technique and going over those guys again and again and again. And that's going to be about it. Um, I am really, really like how this painting turned out. It looks like he's ready for a rainstorm. So now it's time to sign it. Um, I really appreciate you joining me today, and remember, our world is what we make it.